Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear and today you are reviewing the Astrolux EP03. So here it is in all its glory. It is also known as the Borut ET20. So I was perusing the um, AliExpress Borut page and I discovered that this is actually a rebranded Borut ET20. Exactly the same specs, same UI. Um, they're actually a pretty similar price, so yeah. So Astrolux, obviously, they don't make their own lights. I don't know if Borut does either. But um, usually, the Astrolux are rebranded Manemco. What was it? Manemco? Manemco? So, um, yeah, but this time they rebranded one of these lights. And, uh, yeah, we should have suspected something was up when it came in such a plain-looking box. And it came with no instructions. That's, uh, yeah. So if I had to summarize this review, because you only want to watch the beam shots, uh, the Astrolux EP03 is very small and lightweight. It uses an E-switch, which is not perfect. I'll talk about that more later, so watch the whole video. It does have triple LEDs and puts out pretty good output, but it does have a few major flaws, one of them being the UI, which I'll talk more about in the video. But if you only want to hit up the beam shots, there'll be some annotations down below where you can skip to the beam shots. Alright, haven't done this for a while, but I'll tell you what the light comes with. It just comes with a uh, simple lanyard, a USB Type-C, because it does have a USB charger right here. And uh, it does come with a battery, but I'm not testing it with a battery. I'm using a LG HG2 cell for the testing. Alright, let's get the review properly started now. So, I guess, depending on where you get the specs from, Astrolux EP03 or the Borut ET20, um, they kind of vary in um, specs, but it is does have three Samsung LH351B LEDs, which I'll show you later, which is underneath optics, and what looks to be like a stainless steel bezel. Um, they do appear to be real, so I'll show you some real um, LEDs when we take take it apart, and like you'll see that they do look the same. Uh, it's, of course, it's aluminium alloy. It appears to be high anodizing type 2, because it is pretty shiny, it's not like the coolest looking, like it is a cool looking light, but I don't really like this hard anodizing that's too shiny. Uh, it uses like 18650, it does have an inbuilt Type-C charger, it's supposed to be 5 volts, 1 amp, but I'll leave a little snippet here for you guys. And on the ball route, they wrote 5 amps, 1 volt, you're probably going to blow yourself up at um, that rate. Uh, it does have a uh, light here, as you guys can see, it did not turn, is it on? Oh, it's on. It's green. <laughs> I can't see because it it's too bright here. So it does have a little uh, indicator light here that acts as a charge light. It also acts as a uh, battery function. So obviously it's red when charging, green when full. Um, it also, above 30% battery, it indicates green. Below that, red, and then it starts flashing red. They do reckon this is IP67, but if you did blow in the wind, <sighs> this thing will lift up pretty easy. It's not doing it right now because it wants to make me look like a fool, but it doesn't have to do that. I can do that myself. So size-wise, it does only weigh 62 grams, and it is 27 mils up here, um, about 24 at the bottom, and 111 mils long. So it is smaller than an S2 Plus, and I believe slightly lighter. So you can see it is pretty tiny. Uh, well, not tiny for an 18650 light, but it is smaller than an S2 Plus. So yeah, there is that. Before I said it was IP67, but Borut, do you reckon it can be dropped to 3 feet? I reckon we should test that out. Is that 3 feet into like a soft pillow or 3 feet into solid concrete? So output wise, we're looking from the uh, 3 LH351Bs under the op optics. Um, Astrolux read it as 2050 lumens. I measured mine as 2081 at startup. And then after 30 seconds, 1,479. So the video should already be playing for you guys here. Um, I had to add 10% to it because I'm not using my usual light meter. I'm using this Uni T because I'm in the middle of moving and my other light meter is not currently with me. These do measure like at least 10% lower. That's why I do not use this one. I always try and use the same light meter for all the um, Apple tests, but that was not possible right now. Um, Throw-wise, you'll see the video playing here. It's... That's okay, 7,184 CD. I did also have to add 10% to that measurement just to make it even. Um, you say, yeah. Um, yeah, throw isn't going to be great. Um, the Banggood rated at 211 meters. 
Yeah, some are probably maybe just. It's not really going to reach that far, but, you know, wishful thinking. Probably doesn't matter to most people, but I did do an amperage test. Um, it does get about 6.5 to 7 amps on those three LEDs. So they are pretty efficient for the 2050 lumens or 2080 lumens at peak, what you get. I did try and use this clamp meter that I've had laying around for quite a while, but check out the... Um, that's the floating um, amperage. Like, obviously, you can see there's nothing here that's connected, and it's floating at 1.3 amps. So, all right, so now we've already done the specs. We'll just run over some features of the light, like physically and emotionally and mentally, and get into it. Uh, but in all, all seriousness, um, I do like the fact that it has this style clip, which can be reversed. You know, you can hold the light either way. I don't know if you hold it, like, upwards, if it will be any good, but... Like, if you put it on your hat, it's going to work fine, right? And who doesn't love putting a light on a hat? Um, it is kind of like an all-in-one light, because, you know, you do have the 5-volt, um, 1-amp charger here, and it is USB-C, so it is, like, a new one. But you can see, like, just going like this, rubbing your finger here, that comes open. So that IP67 rating is, like, kind of a load of crap. Like, yeah, I don't really trust that. Um, and I just accidentally activated the light there being an e-switch light. That's what happens, right? Now, I'm not going to be overly hard on the light because it is only less than 20 US dollars, I think But there is no glass lens here. This is just plastic straight here So what happens, you know When you scratch the front, I understand, you know, you got this part here Which actually doesn't even look like stainless steel it looks more like alum aluminium, but yeah either way like it does have some sort of protection there but you are going to scratch that lens pretty easy. Now, the other thing is, I don't overly like the anodizing, but I have been using this now for over a week, and it still looks, like, pretty good. It probably looks a little bit dirty, but overly, not really, like, too bad, I think. All right, so my next issue, which is not really a total issue, would be the UI is pretty crap, right? So you turn it on, it does have a memory mode, and you got to cycle all the way through, like, just to get to the next mode. And it has, like, SOS and, like, whatever. Like, a beacon and a, and a strobe mode is built into the UI. So, you know, then you go like that. And you're back on high mode. And you got to double tap to get to turbo mode, which you can see just went to turbo mode. And then you go down. Well, that was supposed to go down. But, yeah. Uh, long press to turn off and that does have a memory mode which does kind of save you from like always blinding yourself with a strobe but overall it's not really a great UI now keeping in mind that it's only a $20 light um, I do have a few more issues with it I don't overly hate the light but it's not actually that bad it's just that you know it's pretty well I've got to tell you about the issues right so the switch is kind of slow so we've got it there, we'll double click, and sometimes double click doesn't actually work, but it did just then. So it's going to make me look like a liar. So, you know, then you go down modes, and the switch is just like, that's pretty slow. I feel like the switch is not that great. But, yeah, there has been times where I double clicked, and it doesn't go on to turbo mode, and it's happened quite a few times, so keep that in mind. The other issue is the light feels like it's an uh, opera singer. Can you hear that little whine? I don't know. See, just then I just double clicked and it didn't go into turbo mode. Now it is. It does make some sort of coil whine sound. And I have been trying to get the driver out, but I don't really see a point. I'm going to shut up for a minute. No, it's hard for me to shut up. Where's the speaker? I mean, where's the microphone? I don't know if the phone's going to pick that up, but hopefully it does. It sounds like coil wine from a graphics card. So it would be some sort of coil wine. Spends 40 minutes ragging on the light and it's like, but I'd still buy it. Well, I did buy it, right? What a nupty. All right, we'll take the light apart now. Um, you can see the threads are very well cut. Like, that's coming off pretty damn easy. There we go. You could probably fit a magnet under there too. Um, there is an O-ring here. This part is glued down, and the bezel was also glued down. So that's 
Mr. Chocolate Cell. So that's all that you can see. Hey, look at the threads there. Focus. There we go. They came lube like that too, so pretty good. Um, and the front was also glued down, but I got that apart. But it's actually still pretty hard to get off. Uh, give me a moment. Ah. All right, I had to use a rag to get that off. I will say, um, I know I've already shown you guys, but yeah, that's just the charger port again. Um, so we'll take off the bezel. That sounds like stainless steel, but I'm pretty sure it's aluminium. And there's the optics there. We can just tap them out. Then they come out like so. They're not like brand name optics. They kind of look like the K-Domain ones. So maybe you can kind of fit the K-Domain ones in. And if we have a little look up, man. All right, so there's the LEDs there. Um, and that's it. So they do look pretty real all over throw a the government no i shouldn't actually even though i'm only joking i'm gonna get in trouble if i say that i'll um put a photo up here so you guys can see what i'm talking about that they do look pretty real um you can see 35 35 led and the 3b markings um and if we curiously if we look here i did undo this so it doesn't appear to be a inbuilt shelf it appears that this bit is floating but it's still pretty hard to get this out because the charging port sits here and you've got to wiggle the charging port around obviously it's not impossible but i didn't want to kind of risk breaking the light before the review or else i'll be reviewing nothing so yeah, i just left it but um i'll probably take it apart now that the review's done and um check out the driver board see if any mods can be done to it wouldn't mind a little bit more power maybe put a new switch in put a whole new driver in then i should have brought a different light right Alright guys, it might be hard to see, but one thing that I do like is there is a little lip here. And that has houses the O-ring for the front. So if we just put my finger there, and it kind of sits up here, which is pretty cool. Um, Actually, one other thing that I should say, even though I said this part was already done, this doesn't appear to be a copper board. I did try and lift it out, but I was not able to get it out. You can see that it's kind of I damaged it there. Doesn't really matter, but um, it does appear to be aluminium because even when you take off like the um, this PCB coating here, usually if it was a full copper board, you'll see copper, and it's probably just aluminium under this. Either way, it do doesn't really matter because you're not stressing the LEDs out too much, and it is a massive board. And you can also get direct thermal path aluminium boards too. Um, what's his name? Cutter sells them. Cutter, the LED people from Melbourne. And they work, I don't know if they work as good as the copper ones, but they do work pretty well. In the back of my mind, I was thinking someone's going to say something. So I did take out this part from there. Um, this does sit in there, which holds the pill in place, I guess. Um, it's not actually there for holding the LED board down, but I do not know what they've done to the LED board if it's somehow glued in place. But it is really hard to get out, and I don't want to like ruin the light before... I do the beam shots. So after the beam shots, I'll try and pry it out. And I can fit in another LED anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But that does sit there, and that's just to keep the, the um, pill in place. All right, guys, we're outside with the Astrolux EP03 on high mode. Not the highest, not turbo. But there isn't actually too much difference between turbo mode and the high mode. As you can see, a super wide um, floody beam here. And this is some um, old school looking beam shots right now because we are at the old place. So yeah, I do have to, well, someone has to cut the edges. All right, we'll um, double click and get the turbo if it works. Let's try it. No, it didn't work. <laughs> I swear I double clicked. All right, double click again. Oh, there we go, turbo mode. So actually, yeah, turbo does make quite a difference. I can see it further down. It is a lot brighter there. Uh, this is turbo mode. So we know it is over 2000 lumens on its highest mode. So yeah. Um, you know, we could try and go to the tree at 100 meters. Not sure if it's actually going to make it. And it is stepping down now. You guys can see if it's stepping down. I'll try and, I wonder if I double click again, if we'll go back into highest. Nah, it doesn't. Interesting. Quite an interesting UI. We'll just cycle through modes. So, well, it just turned off then. So I guess that could be medium mode. And we've got low mode here. Um, low mode is pretty low, but not that low 
and then to get back to high mode unfortunately you got to go through the uh, strobe and SOS so that's strobe mode and that's SOS and then we're back on high mode so we'll go to the tree at 100 meters and we'll double click and now nah, it doesn't make it but you can see they are building a uh, pretty big house a couple of houses down now so that tree might no longer be able to be used okay so we'll compare it to a few lights and see how it does okay so this is the s21d on uh this is the one with the uh 8 amp driver not really a competitor because it is almost twice as expensive well at least one and a half times and here is the astrolux ep03 we'll double click and once again it didn't turbo go no what's it doing double click no doesn't want to go to turbo mode now oh there we go you got to click it like really really fast if it switches very finicky uh you can see the difference in the tints this is a high cri tint in the s21d but i think like we'll turn off the um ep03 that's just the s21d and then this is the ep03 on so i think like brightness wise they're pretty close the s21d is a little bit brighter but also it's 21700 light better tint but it does also cost a lot more all right, last light we have is this uh, Convoy S2 Plus with a SFT40 um, on direct drive. So it really doesn't have to be here. It's a completely different light, but it's what I had in my pocket. And that's to the right and to the left is the EP03, which I just fast clicked and it just went straight into turbo mode. So pretty cool. Or well, I can assume it's turbo mode. It does appear to be stepping down now pretty fast. So S2 Plus here, EP03 here. So we'll leave on just the um, just the uh, S2 Plus there, and this is the EP03. Nope. Double click. Wait. One, two, three. Uh, Yay! Yeah, we got it. You see how it stepped up? Well, not that much. I guess it's pretty hot. Interesting. I wonder if it's got thermal regulation or if it's a time step down or what. I'd love to get the driver out. You know, one thing I didn't do is I didn't try and unwind the pill. I just thought it was stuck because the USB was there, and I was like, eh. I, I probably wouldn't break it, touch wood, but just in case I did, I was like, eh, I'll just wait. So now the video is over, I'll try and unwind the pill and um, see if we can have a look at the driver. If I do get it out, I can always do another video. If you want to see that video, leave a comment down below. Oh, something's on my leg. It's a, one of these long ass grasses. All right, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been the Astrolux EP03. Um, you know, it's a bit of a meh light, but it's not really bad. And then again, it's not really great, so it is what it is. Like, for the price, I would have to say I do recommend it. Um, there is, like, no lockout on the switch, but you can undo the towel cap because it is anodized threads. So it's not too bad overall in that sense. Just the uh, UI and the switch is a bit finicky. So if you can get over that, it's not too bad. It is a lot of lumens for the price, and um, it's actually stepping down now. I haven't stepped it down myself. Anyways, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has probably been quite a long video. I've been yabbing on now for ages. Um, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.